Okay, this is, a, this is an opportunity to really think about the issue of the treatment of women uh, deeply. I'm sure there are other people that could do a better job historically than me, but I did the best I could, found what I could. And it's just food for thought, and it's just my opinion, and you're free to have your own, to agree or disagree. Uh, I'm glad Banned Books got my back because uh, I think this is where I belong. Let me go over here. Come on. Oh, Good it's coming through. Alcohol by Warren Woodbury. September 14, 2020. Thank you, technicians. It is recorded in many religions Can that women were the first of man. Yeah. Often found in texts from biblical and Greek mythology, anger was always directed at the Christian God for creating the unwanted creature called woman. While in Greek mythology, the god Zeus created Pandora as the first woman on earth to entice and destroy men. It looks like some men followed the god Zeus on their treatment of women. This is a quoted joke number one, probably on the bucket list of many women. A woman comes home, screeching her car tires into the driveway and ran into the house. She slammed the door and shouted excitedly, honey, pack your bags, I won the lottery. The husband said, oh my God, what should I pack? Beach stuff or mountain stuff? Doesn't matter, she said. Just get out. This is quote of joke number two that lives in the hearts of men in the past, present, and will probably be there in the future. In the beginning of time, God created the world and then rested. Then he created man and again he rested. Then God created woman. Since then, neither God nor man has rested. So if you're not afraid of the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth, most of this narrative will ring true. So sit back, cut off your cell, and get a view of the longest running war in the history of the world. A history of the war on women that you will never find in your military studies or in war or in any school from West Point to Annapolis. Yes, black lives matter. White lives matter. All lives matter, but we really need to realize that women's lives really matters. Three teenage girls sat huddled at the largest mall in Toledo, Ohio. They sat in the food court, frantically searching on their cell phones for something that would stop the tears from streaming down the face of Zara. Sitting on the small table were uneaten sandwiches, fries, and high fructose sodas. Zara's tears had washed a single attached left eyelash from its perch, eventually landing in a melting and uneaten cup of Ben and Jerry's Cherry Garcia ice cream. The cause of her grief, tears, and sadness was because while they were taking virtual classes online due to the coronavirus, Sarah, with the missing eyelash, had Googled DuckDuckGo and found a play called Girls' Night Out at the Mall which portrayed the history of the war on women that has raged since the beginning of time. Her first reaction to the premise of the play was that it was purely fictitious, or more than likely fake news. But on reading the play in its historic documentation, Zara concluded that the play had substance, believability, and all the trappings of the truth about the war on women. Her fingers flew as she immediately posted on the popular sites to her friends on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, etc. These are magnets for young teenagers. After receiving the text from Zara, Brenda wailed, What is this? We had studies about many, many wars, but we were never told there was a war on women and its relevance to the abuse of women in the past and still being raised in the 21st century. And wait, wait, just look at this. False eyelashes are to be banned on teenage girls, and pocketbooks can be searched to see if there are any cosmetics hidden in them. Not only are we being threatened with influence from Russia on our elections, now medieval history is coming for us. After receiving the text from Zara on the play, Girls Night Out at the Mall, 
Amy reached out and forcefully grabbed the arm of Zara. Zara, she cried, we got to make sure this goes viral. The play presents an overview of the complete history of the war on women from way back when. It says that God has brought three women back from the past to straighten men out. Hmm. They must be superheroes with superpowers if they're going to be able to stop the abuse of women all over the world. Brenda, who are they? Does it say? Zara. It says that it's Pandora from Greek mythology, someone called Lilith from Jewish mythology, and they include Adam and Eve, which they claim are from Christian mythology. They are confronting Adam, who is a lead attorney for the early church's claim that God made a mistake. Whoa, ho, 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 says Zara. God made a mistake? That's what they said and should never have created women because they are evil and the cause of sin. God made a mistake? There is even a prayer from some sects of the Orthodox Jewish religion thanking God for not making them a woman. Zara. The place says that these three ladies have been sent to the 21st century to straighten men out. Their women are not property and should not, not be molested, abused, or grabbed by their life-giving chamber. Come back. Yolanda. Okay. Pause. It's buffering. All but right, I never happened? heard or read about a woman named Lilith, the first wife of Adam, according to some Jewish history. Amy jumps up and, and frantically starts looking in all directions in the mall. The place says that these three ladies are in the largest mall in Toledo. That's where we are. Maybe we need to call the soccer and volleyball team to the mall to see if we can find him and offer our help. God knows we women need it. Stranger. But let me know the war word of warning before we go any farther. Throughout this script, any references to historical events, real people, or real locales are used fictitiously. Other names, characters, places, and incidents are the product of the author's imagination and any resemblance to actual events or locales or persons living or dead is entirely coincidental. Synopsis, Stranger. Let's start at the beginning. Pandora, Eve, and Lilith do not know each other, but somehow, mysteriously, Pandora and Eve appear in the 21st century at a window in the largest mall in Toledo admiring a pair of five-inch red-soled shoes designed by French designer Christian Louboutin at a cost of $3,000. Eventually, Pandora and Eve will be joined by the biblical Adam and by the Jewish Lilith. But Lilith is not quite ready to join the ladies yet after Googling Chippendale men for rent on Craigslist. The mythical Lilith from Jewish mythology was supposed to be there, but after escaping from Adam as his first wife on the grounds of her irreversible incompatibility, Lilith decided that she wanted to try something called a menage a and so she went shopping for two men in South France. But eventually, all three ladies find out each other's name and their historic role in the history of women, and they then begin to accuse the other of being the cause of the world's religious blame on women for bringing a curse on mankind. Stranger. Lilith, now in France, is seen on Skype using a computer. How she got the computer is another story for another time, but she needed it to keep abreast of what's happening in the 21st century. Lilith is seen on Skype sporting black leather boots hitting just above the knees and tattered short cut-off jeans from Barney's in New York at a cost of $700. $700 for short shorts? <clears throat> they exposed a large degree of her behind. Lilith wore a midriff above the navel black t-shirt that read, It's the top or nothing. As she glanced at her $34,000 Rolex Lady Date Champagne Diamond Dial Jubilee watch. Lilith really knew how to make it rain, and it took a lot of lap dances to earn that amount of money. 
Lilla glanced over her $1,500 Gucci star mat sunglasses and said the Pandora looked like some stuck-up heifer from the New York Society pages on her Sky, Skype app as she cut her eyes on camera in Pandora's direction. Standing slightly apart from Lilith and Eve, Pandora covers her mouth and says loudly to no one in particular, Pandora. I suspect they are both trailer park trash with dishes left in the sink. Lilith speaking loudly to Eve. Eve, did you hear that? We are trailer park trash. If I had those shoes, I'd walk down her back from her neck to her crack. Pandora gazing at the shoes. Those shoes are beautiful. I wonder if they come in a size six. Lilith, size what? Pandora, size six. Lilith, I haven't worn a size six since I was six. Eve shaking her head from side to side. They are beautiful, but my husband Adam would never let me wear those. He would say they are for prostitutes. Lilith, whoa, girl. You let a man decide what you wear? What's your name? And where are you from? Eve, my name is Eve, and I'm from the garden. Lilith, like Adam and Eve, like in the Bible? Eve, yes. Pandora, no wonder you can't wear the shoes without permission from a man. You sold all women out by giving in to man as the second wife of Adam, I might add. Eve, what do you mean the second wife of Adam? What kind of gossip are you spreading? Stranger, Eve is ignored. Standing near Eve and Pandora is Adam, as he too has been transported by God. And with tears in his eyes, he is looking nostalgically into the yard and garden section of the mall, staring intently at the rack that holds seeds for an apple tree. Breaking his concentration by hearing Pandora call out his and Eve's name, Adam leans back and zeroes in on Eve, not believing his eyes as he recognizes her. Pandora touches Eve's shoulder. Eve, who is that naked guy like you with his flat bare butt drooping and only a fig leaf covering his tiny jewels? Why is that pervert staring at you so intently? Stranger, Eve ignores Pandora. Hmm. Pandora continues. Oh, Eve, my dear, there's a question I've been meaning to ask you. I hear you had an interesting life. What's Adam like in bed? Eve. In what? In a bed? We didn't have no bed. We just had the dirt ground. No banner mattress, no split king mattress, no Mr. Made in God's image. Couldn't even get God to spring for some straw on the ground. Pandora, so sorry, my dear, my bad. I had a three-sided elevated open rectangular bed made of mahogany and trimmed in gold with the fourth long side of my bed open for access and a fulcra to accommodate my six sheets and pillows. Zeus provided all this for me. These bed sheets are the equivalent of today's Charlotte Thomas bed sheets, which have 22 karat gold woven into the merino wool fabric and has a thousand thread count made of 100% cotton, priced today at only, are you ready for this? $2,400. E, sarcastic. Well, good for you. Well, anyway, in answer to your question, one day after I saw that a two inch size fig leaf would cover him, I, Adam, Eve, Adam shouts out angrily, I order you not to answer any questions. Eve, I hope you can see your way clear to let this thing go. I want loyalty. Gonna tell my business, huh? I'll fight you all the way to my Supreme Court. I will declare executive privilege and prevent you from speaking. I want loyalty, do you hear me? I want loyalty. Don't you women know who I am? I am at who must forever bear the burden of allowing you, Eve, to manipulate and deceive me and all future men. Because of you, we men were separated from our Creator and forever shamed, enticed, and punished by your wickedness. A non-disclosure document should have come with the woman's creation. Eve leans back to stare at Adam. And I remember you little two-inch Adam with the small fingers and Adam cuts Eve off again. Yes, you deceived me and all generations of men, as you knew that the apple from the tree of knowledge of good and evil was forbidden, but yet you beguiled me, as was your wicked design. Eve, you open your mouth, lick your lips, and chomp down on that apple. All you had to do was say no. Adam, 
I am not sure that God had the woman code right. You should have been recalled and reprogrammed to know your place. Don't you know that St. John Chrysostom, C349 and 407, Archbishop of Constantinople, declared you, woman, as a necessary evil, a natural temptation, a desirable calamity, a domestic peril, a deadly fascination, and a painted ill. Would you disregard the elegant and convincing conclusion of one of my brothers, Tertullian, the father of Latin Christianity, C160-22, who said that woman is a temple built over a sewer. So woman, if you find fault with your description, look no farther than your early church leaders, Eve, Adam. You need to stop acting like you knew these supposed learned men. I was there, you know. I don't remember you and anything about a tree of knowledge. I think that you would be a real unschooled common laborer. Did God not say these words to you? Even a low God's voice. So I am putting a curse on the ground because of what you did. All the days of your life you have to work hard and that it will be pain for you to get food from the ground. Or did God say you're going to be a road scholar? You were the first man, but you were also the first farm worker. You ladies will not be able to trick me again, says Adam. I was able to find some verification for some men's hatred of women because I found a 1977 Radio Shack TRS-80. This computer allowed me to research some of the honorable men that had a clear picture of the wicked nature of women, even up to today. You women would not play men bigly ever again, Lilith. And of course, you probably want to add the mantra that women should have known their place and that God should have built a tall, big, beautiful, wonderful wall of fence, call it what you want, build it out of concrete to keep women out of the Garden of Eden, paid for, of course, with Mexican pesos. How did that work out? Oh yeah, and they're bringing sex, long legs connected to beautiful backsides that do something called twerking and other sins and temptations that are a danger to men in our society. But maybe some of them are good people if they are young and pretty and let them grab you whenever you want. Adam, there must be a good reason to despise women then and even now. Just look at the list of the women that I found on the internet that are accused of various deficiencies or have some other displeasing physical or characteristic flaws according to someone who knows more about women than anybody. I found these names mentioned on the internet. These women must have stood accused of some offense or otherwise, why would they be publicly named in shame? Forgive me if I mispronounce some of their names. Let's start with the power behind the throne, Lady Nancy Pelosi. And then there's Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, Justice Sonia Sotomayor, Elizabeth Warren, Maureen Dowd, Haley Berry, Beyonce, Carly Fiorina, and let's not forget the storm caused by Stormy Daniels. Then there's Cher, Mika Brzezinski, the enduring nemesis Hillary Clinton, Senator Christian Hildebrand, Representative Maxine Waters, Ariana Huffington, Omarosa Manigault Newman, Angelina Jolie, Kim Kardashian, Megyn Kelly, Lindsay Lohan, and this list would not be compl complete without Rosie O'Donnell, Bette Midler, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, something called the Me Too Movement, and even Marge Simpson of the Simpsons cartoon might get added to this list, along with the beautiful and super talented Rihanna. Lilith, God made these women, and they're not to be judged by the society of ignorant, misogynistic men. And you might one day add to this list the lovely, eloquent, classy, inspirational, intelligent Michelle Obama. Synopsis. Women are not the cause of evil in the world. Lilith, loudly to the audience. My name is Lilith, and I can be found mentioned in the Talmud, the Dead Sea Scrolls, Midrash, the Bible, and other Jewish mythology. 
Join us three ladies who take a look at some of these myths and see where some of them became a reality to some men. After a meeting at McDonald's, the gods of Christianity, Ju Judaism, Islam, and Hinduism agreed they needed to stop altering the word and find a way to re-educate men of all religions on the treatment of women and to change their ways and put on their big boy pants and stop all this meet a man stuff and stop following misogynistic gibberish of ancient church leaders concerning the value and compatibility of man and woman here on earth. Mother Earth, I might remind you, Pandora. Men asked that God make a mistake in creating women. They then pointed their fingers at Zeus, who was the only God to admit that he intentionally, with malice, created a woman, me, Pandora. And he created me for an evil purpose, to punish and bring down man. Okay. Okay. We're going to switch to part two. That's part two. Now we will go into part two of Girls' Night Out at the Mall with our playwright and author, Warren Woodbury, and his wife, Yolanda. And Jordan and Anaya, enjoy the book. Share it with your significant other. Banned Books, Episode Tell 2. Tell me if you're getting the, the Girls' sample. Night Out at the Mall by yeah. Warren Woodbury. Yes, I am. Pandora speaking. Zeus was the only god to admit that he intentionally with malice created a woman, me, Pandora, created me for an evil purpose and a vengeful purpose to punish and bring down man. Eve cuts in. Man is getting on my last nerve with this I'm superior because man was made in God's image. God did not put women here to be grabbed by the chamber that produces life especially with little fingers and stuff. Would you allow a new world order where young men were encouraged to lower the moral limbo bar, embracing the grounds of indecency to follow those that have no respect, no respect at all for women? Would you teach your son to believe that when he became rich and famous, that he could grab women with impunity? Would a party offer their daughter to be grabbed, as did Lot in Genesis 19.8, where it is written that Lot said, Now behold, I have two daughters who have not had relations with a man. Please, let me bring them out to you and do whatever you like with them. Is it possible that a party would be supportive of allowing this to happen? Is there no red line? Would you want this for your daughter? But back to my narrative. The Christian God had finally witnessed the direction that the world was taking concerning freedom by men to abuse women and called on Pandora, even Lilith, to stop it as soon as they can. You know, like a 21st century modern female hit squad, Miss Omar Alexander Ocasio-Cortez, Rashida Tlaib, and Ayana Presley, to the rescue, Adam. My name is Adam, the biblical Adam. I'm not here in the 21st century because I want to be, as I thought I had done my day by living 930 years ago, according to Genesis 5-5, and having to put up with a creature called woman, trouble, nothing but trouble. Stranger, wait a minute. God gave you some extended plumbing. Where would you use it since before Eve, there were only you and the animals? Adam, let's not go there, my man, okay? Okay. I know knowledge of women did require, a, let's call it an adjustment. And there were some benefits I had not experienced being alone with the animals. There, are you satisfied? But since the God has called me to appear in America in something called the food court, in some place called a mall, I have to answer and speak for all religious men as to why God brought evil to the world by creating woman. Early religious men did not want her, you know. Stranger. Yeah, I saw that in early church writings. But God gave them plumbing and without woman, who do they plan on using it on? Adam, you're not going to get me to go there. I'm not going there. I know what you're referring to. 
I know about the abuses in the church and the unwillingness to stop it. Stranger, but didn't God create woman to couple with man for the purpose of procreation? Did men want a womb of their own? Adam, it's a long story, but not my story to tell. All I know is women get to blame for bringing evil to the world of man, and that man had the right to satisfy his pleasures as ancient men believed that women could be enjoyed, abused at will, raped with impunity, sold, treated, and treated as second-class citizens. Women were not made in God's image and so not worthy of respect. Read your early church writers from many religions and then take a look at the 21st century where I've been sent. Wannabe kings still attack women as too fat and too ugly to molest but attractive women can be grabbed by their life-giving chambers. There is a site that issues a warning that statements by men like these are misogynistic towards women and that viewer discretion is advised. Stranger, that's sad but true. But how does one explain that many religious people in the 21st century have no problem with these statements or conduct towards women, even those with wives and daughters? And many would not want to use these men as role models for their son. Adam, look man, I can't explain the morals and logic of the 21st century. I am here to defend the logic of many of the early church leaders who railed at God for creating women. If you have cult followers still today who defy morals and decency, take that up with them. Early religious writers from many religions predicted that there would be problems in the kingdom once women set foot on the planet. Islam says men are above women because Allah has given the one part a superiority over the other. Confucianism, 100 girls are not worth one boy. Hinduism says a woman must never enjoy independence. And Christianity, forget about it. Women shall be servants to men who are their lords and masters. Stranger, where is this written? The late and great Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg stated that, and I quote, the notion that we women should be free to develop our own talents, whatever they may be, and not be held back by artificial barriers, man-made barriers, certainly not heaven sent. She also stated that women belong in all places where decisions are made. It shouldn't be that women are the exception. May she keep an eye on us and rest in peace. Stranger, if we are going to stop this unfair treatment of women, we must look further than the front page of today's crimes against women to find the causes for this heinous individual acts against women and be content to analyze why an individual did such a horrendous act. This is men's mental health care issues on steroids, but it is found in the DNA of many religions and in many men. We need to hear all sides of the issue on the treatment of women because as they say, if it's about women, without women, it ain't for women. By the way, designating these falsely accused three women to straighten out abusive and violent men will find an 11th commandment carved on the stone tablet. Thou shalt not grab. Stranger, since I believe I know the limits of my knowledge, I decided I should stick to a field that can be able to deviate from both fact and fiction. A field where sometimes truth is not the truth and there are alternative facts. Hmm, is the press secretary's job open yet? My form of transport through time will be through the use of a mystical thousand of year old BC crystal ball made of burrow and found in a Druid Celtic tribal cemetery. This ancient ball allows me to see into the past that allowed false narratives in American history to be taught to the children. Patriotic education was always taught in the past. It's nothing new, people. Get over it. It is what it is. History was told only by the winners, but today, historians are showing great courage by showing some of the history as fake news, even while some want to go back to a bygone racist era. My crystal ball also allows me to see the year 2016, which was really the start of chaos with fake news on steroids. Some of you will share my observations while others will not, but I am free to say what I want, as there are those with different points of view 
who will come to their conclusions based on what they hear constantly as a scripted hypnotic mantra on popular opinion entertainment sites without concern for fact checking added Pinocchios or pants on fire ratings make it up and some will take it up it appears that some politicians live in fear and digest fake news today in order to go along to get along with the seat of power disregarding that they are supposed to be doing the work of the people but yet they've chosen to take a seat at a fast food table of vulgarity disrespect gangsterism misogynism boorishness vindictiveness pettiness and with a lack of class thrown in as dessert i imagine some people's first thought is to ban my words or attack me rather than use the process of detective joe friday's trademark request from the old 1967 dragnet tv movie asking for just the facts ma'am thank god that the band book platform has my back and as to the future well my crystal ball gets a little hazy waiting for the wind to blow away the clean coal and water pollution along with fears lies and the hatred that is still in the air but cool out for a minute and listen to some opposing observations for a change that I know you do not get from your highly paid multi-millionaire court gestures commentators on your favorite TV channel. Just sit back and have some Kentucky Fried Chicken and Fries in bed and decide if you're going to bear with me and hear these ladies out. Adam, but why was I chosen to act like an attorney from the McCarthy trials? Well, I guess I have to go and see if I can quote enough scripture from early religious leaders to keep women in their man-designated place. Would you believe that someone left a scroll outside the garden when me and Eve got evicted with instructions that when I get to America, I should get a Twitter account, whatever that is, because it is advertised as the best media to find the uneducated and the uninformed, and that I should read How to Attack Women for Dummies or the War on Women from High Places 101. They said I'll also need the support of dictator anti-American foreign governments, dark money, foreign bots, propaganda machines, fake news TV personalities, racists, and some process called gerrymandering if I want to become the new king. What's that? Oh, I also need a majority in the Senate and in the House. I do not look forward to my visit to America. Stranger. Adam, before we go any farther, Adam, I have a little surprise for you. I would like to reintroduce you to someone you might not remember. Her name is Lilith, and she was your first wife. Adam, my first what? Lilith, hi, my name is Lilith, and I'm sorry that I can't be with Pandora and Eve at the mall, but I am with two beautiful men that demand all of my attention as we are practicing new positions that I did not get a chance to work on with Adam as his first wife. We will get into that history later on, but I'm on Skype now using a teleconferencing platform so I can see and hear you all. Stranger. Oh, like on the Oprah show where Oprah says you get something and you get something and everyone gets something. Adam, Eve, Pandora, and Lilith will all receive communication devices that would allow them to go to YouTube for information about the 21st century that God has transported them to. The four characters will tell you later how they found their own cyber communication device. Lilith, also a reminder about me. Some religions could not reconcile my place in biblical history. I don't want you to forget that. They couldn't reconcile me as the first wife of Adam. One wife from the soil and one wife from the rib of Adam. Use your calculator to see how many women this makes. And they then decided to morph me into a night creature, while some Jewish sects acknowledged me as a demoness. Lamashtu, Lamashtu, wicked woman. I pleaded a case of mistaken identity. It was not me. All I wanted to do was live the song, Girls Just Want to Have Fun by Cindy Lauper and straddle some hunk and look down at his face and know that I was about to twerk him to death. I had Craigslist and a subscription to Playboy magazine right beside my bed, Pandora. God, I am now a believer 
has decided that the world is being twittered all over the place and is attacking women from all angles against God's plan for man and woman, God's creation. We women are attacked for our looks, our bodies, our politics, our desire for equality, education, equal pay for equal work, justice in the court and rights to our own body, along with safety from domestic violence in the home and violence in the street. I hear that we are also threatened by some powerful men who advocate and condone grabbing us by our life-giving chambers and kissing us without our wishes. Lilith, I can also be found mentioned in the Talmud, the Dead Sea Scrolls, Midrash, and in the Bible with a minor change of appearance. I can also be found in religious texts much older than the Bible, in a story similar to the story of Adam and Eve. The Gilgamesh story was 3,000 years old before the story of Christ and was found in the Sumerian cuneiform and in the Odyssey of the Bible. Adam had a snake. Gilgamesh had a snake. God created a companion for Adam so he wouldn't be lonely. God created a companion for Gilgamesh so he wouldn't be lonely. A snake tricked Adam. Hmm. Coincidence. A snake tricked Gilgamesh. Adam's woman Eve was accused of being responsible for the downfall of man, not to be left out. Gilgamesh's companion was responsible for man losing his wonderful life with nature. After eating the apple, Adam realized that he was naked. Gilgamesh, after succumbing to the snake, realized that he too was naked. Adam had a garden. Gilgamesh had a garden. Adam had a tree for a knowledge of good and evil, but lost it because of the trickery of the serpent. Gilgamesh had a plan of immortality, but lost it also because of the trickery of a serpent. Stranger. According to Bible Odyssey and the Epic of Gilgamesh, it was discovered in the library of Ashur Banpul in 1853. Lilith. I am also mentioned more extensively in Faust, the German legend. They had the nerve to say this about me. Mark her well. It is Lilith, Lilith, the first wife of Adam. Beware of her fair hair, for she excels all women in the magic of her locks. And then she winds them round a young man's neck. Remark her well. Lilith is her name, first wife of him who fell, your parent, Adam. Look that you are beware of glancing at her toilet and her flowing hair. If with that guise, the sorceress lures the passing youth, she holds him sure. Some acknowledge me as the first wife of Adam around 21 BC and the first wife of Adam, although they claim that he was made out of pure dust. While I was made out of filth and residue, a girl just can't get a break. Stranger, if we were going to stop this unfair treatment of women, we would look further than the front pages of today's crime against women to find the causes of the heinous individual acts against women by merely analyzing why an individual did such a horrendous act. It is because of the DNA found in many religions and in many men today. We need to hear all sides of the issue on the treatment of women because, as they say, if it's about women without women, it ain't for women. By the way, Designating these falsely accused three women to straighten out abusive and violent men will find an 11th commandment carved on a stone tablet. Thou shalt not grab Eve. It would take a Mueller-style special counsel to get to the bottom of the war against women, even though all facts lead to blatant collusion, conspiracy, obvious chargeable criminality, imperfect cause, and quid pro quos. Lilith, like for example, Believing that African slavery was a good way to build America without paying for labor, followed by horrendous treatment of those African slaves who were treated with extreme brutality for many, many years in the past, the present, and attempts are now showing up that there are plans to keep this brutality into the future, based only on place of birth or skin color. So why would we expect the teaching of patriotic education to tell the story of violence against women? by men of power and influence on the church. So why would we expect the teaching of patriotic education to tell the story of the violence and war against women by men of power and influence or the church to be truthfully told? What is told 
about the treatment of women is redacted from history in schools today, as are many other facts of history. It appears today that women in all other races and countries of color are the targets. And some say, how dare they complain about their treatment and make accusations against men of power? Why don't women just go along and allow men to do whatever they want to do with them, as all women are surely evil? Stay tuned for the third episode of Girls Night Out at the Mall by Warren Woodbury, based on the book, For We Are Strangers. Thank you, Warren. Thank you. In Genesis 127, it said that God created man in his own image. He created him in the image of God. He created them male and female. But woman was not man's doormat to be treated beaten, enslaved, and abused. Stranger. Adam at first was grateful that God had created woman and that he viewed Eve as bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh. Genesis 2, 23. She was born of him. But then the art of Michelangelo in the Sistine Chapel was allowed free reign to depict many of the religious scenes that are accepted today as fact. And so little Michael depicted an evil serpent with the forbidden fruit with the head of a woman in his painting, the taking of the forbidden, and the image of an evil woman as part woman and part serpent, representing the devil deceiving man, was to last forever in the Christian religion. Also, to add even more confusion, Genesis 3, 7 says, then the eyes of both of them were open, and they realized that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together, and made coverings for themselves. Lilith. They knew how to sew? What did they do? Take a sewing class from Joanne's? And added to the Michael Sistine Chapel interpretation, along comes ancient man, and some today, that would blame woman for being the cause of evil. And Adam and man was hooked. Eso es muy loco. To shun women then became an art form for some religions, and even today, it is to express the highest love for God for men to become priests and forsake women. Today, laws of common sense and decency have officially morphed into hatred, racism, ignorance, and blatant fake news, and is sent out to the world by a little bluebird. Tweet, tweet anyone? Adam. Hey. Let me jump in here, please. Yes, in a moment of confusion, seduction, and failure by God to send the obligatory operating book on what was woman and what I was supposed to do with her, I was eventually pleased that God had witnessed my frustration of not having a mate like the other animals, which I found were not compatible to my needs, and that God eventually gave me an upright creature that resembled me in many ways, although the plumbing was different, but um, we finally, by trial and error, figured out what went where and how, without having a sex for dummies book. On the question of equality for women, who would I compare Eve with? To my knowledge, she and I were the only ones on earth, and since there were no travel books to exotic places, we only knew about our little hood. And equality was not a matter for discussion, it was not relevant at the beginning. And looking back, there was no work to do in the garden, so it was not a matter of me having to show how strong I was or having to fight another man or do heavy lifting. Hell, we just ran around in the garden buck naked all day, having nothing to do. It was only after religious leaders of the church and many other religions started making up their fairy tale versions about the concept of the first man and woman on earth and why God made woman that these issues became front page news. Uh, wait, I meant front page on the tablet. These ancient men never knew the pleasure of a woman, but when they did, some lifted their frock and parted their robes and said, meet me in the back of the church so that I can see if the devil has you under his control. If so, maybe we can work something out. Hell, I thought they were crazy too until I decided that being with the boys was fun and that since we were kicked out of the garden and had work to do to get a decent meal instead of just fruit, I lost the vision of God on the role of women and men. And then I was brainwashed to turn on women, 
blame them and join the good old boys club and act out locker room talk as some men of power, wealth, and political influence were doing. Later on, I found out that politicians had followed a proverb from the Japanese pictorial maxim that sees no evil, hears no evil, and speaks no evil. They seem to mimic these three mystic apes, which defy the teaching of God they profess to follow. And when cornered in the halls of power and asked to explain why they turn a blind eye to the indiscretions of some leaders, they take off faster than Usain Bolt, who is the fastest man in the world. Strangers, they seem to have no fear of meeting their God and being held accountable for turning such a completely blind eye to the mandate of love from humankind. Can you believe that some of them will not let their children play with kids from the other side of their tracks or of another race, creed, or color, but yet they enable, condone, and justify defilers of everything good and decent. Like Michael Jackson said, they need to take a look in the mirror. Pandora, Adam, had you been allowed to eat from the tree of knowledge, you would have known that you were going to get your balls busted at this eventual gender reconciliation party that God has set up since you decided to try to defend misogynistic men. Adam, well, after joining the good old boys club and as a representative of all men, I was hoping for a pardon, any kind of pardon, if I didn't flip. And although I had some different views on how women should be treated, even back at the beginning with Eve, I too, like the women that are raped and abused and sometimes takes years to come forward, especially against powerful men in the church on the throne with wealth and fancy towers named after them, the fear of retaliation was a reason both men abused women kept the secret of their abuse from being heard for many, many years. And it was not just women that kept their abuse a secret. Read the many stories of young athletes, Boy Scouts, and even nuns who kept quiet. Accusations against men with power, money, and fame were as lethal then as it is today. Stranger, you got that right. Hell, you can't even find five senators with the morals and nerve of John McCain to stand up and take the right moral stance. May he rest in peace. Who would have thought that fear would play such a big role in American politics? Hindsight is a bitch, Adam, but you are correct. Today it can be more lethal as some of these enablers have hundreds of lawyers and enablers that will spread fake news. Even some who have signed non-disclosure agreements fear being named, shamed, or nicknamed. Some to curry favor to protect current or future jobs, regardless of the growing list of names of those that thought that they were safe if they remain loyal. Some because of deep-seated racist views that they have lost their Nordic power over people that are different from them, or afraid of hearing the dreaded words, you're fired. Men today find it easier to dismiss the abuses heaped on the heads of those that were different in the past, and they were taken advantage of to believe that insulting and rude dictating type leaders would make this country, which has always been great, it would make it great again. Leaders like this openly brag that they like the uneducated. Who does this base think leaders like this are talking about? Let's see, what else? Verbally attack countries that surround America like Haiti, Puerto Rico, Canada, the West Indies, Cuba, Venezuela, and Mexico, making the perimeter of America more anti-American than ever before. In a complete reversal of a few short years ago, there are verbal attacks on our current allies like Canada, England, Germany, France, Australia, and let's not leave out a blanket coverage of S-House African countries. Were the words of Lincoln and Nikita Khrushchev a forecast for the future of America? Lincoln was alleged to have said that America will never be destroyed from the outside. If we falter and lose our freedoms, it will be because we destroyed ourselves. In 1956, Russia's communist leader, Nikita Khrushchev, said, we will take America without firing a shot. We do not have to invade the U.S. We will destroy you from within. Both statements are chilling thoughts, and we must remain vigilant to ensure that no election or political party would allow this to become a reality in America. 
today people of color are the targets. But just a few years back, they didn't even want Italians, Jews, Polish, Germans, Mexicans, or even Chinese people into America. And of course, women who were already here had no rights at all. Black slaves were always welcome though, and were compensated by free passage. But oddly enough today, the grandchildren of these same groups attend rallies and shout, build that wall. You can't make this stuff up. My crystal ball revealed that the idea to build a wall came out of Boston 100 or so years ago when a prominent eugenicist, Charles Davenport, wrote to Madison Grant, a wealthy lawyer, to lobby Congress to control immigration and to build a wall to keep out immigrants and to protect the Nordic race. These undesirable immigrants were Jews, Italians, and others from certain parts of Europe. Africans were definitely not trying to immigrate to America. Take my word for that. That's a fact. This story can be found on PBS American Experience documentary about eugenics. So today's racist tactics to build a wall cover some of the foreparents of those that chant build that wall at rallies today. Even though the wall 100 years ago was to keep their great great grandparents out of America. Adam, can I? Pandora cuts off Adam. Please, Adam, we will call you when we need your fake news See stories later. that you allow <clears throat> men to promote after your eviction from the garden. Don't call us, we'll call you. Adam, but when will I get a chance to? Lilith cuts Adam off. Later, Adam, later. Adam, who is emboldening you women to think that you are the equal of man? I'll be back. Pandora. Why didn't I have Google from the beginning? Look here. Google says that the anti-feminine stance of Buddhism is apparent in many writings also. Women are described as undeserving of any worthy undertaking because they are irritable, jealous, greedy, and unintelligent. They are out to trap men to such an extent that they are described as the snare of Mara, the evil one. 655. They can never become fully enlightened, 115. And it goes on to say other things about women that you would not believe. Let me clear one thing up, ladies. After the lid of the jar slid off and let all type of mess get out, I knew I would get the blame for bringing evil to the world. And that until you came along, Eve, I was in trouble with the men on earth. I just knew we women would not ever hear the end of our being inferior to men, and I was right. My story of how men treated women has never been completely told, even in Greek mythology. But looking at my computer, I see that women are still afraid to come forward even today. There are reasons why these wicked men had such despicable things to say about us while doing despicable things to us. Lilith. But I might add even today, there are those that are trying to curry favor and appointments to powerful positions in the government of the day and are fearful that if they slip up and are heard to give an honest opinion on the leader of the day, they will be nicknamed, shamed, and relegated to the longest line of unemployment you have ever seen. And not to be notified by a formal mail, but by the sound of a little bluebird tweet tweet strangers ladies consider this there were few female historians years ago as it as is today so did you expect that men that rejected you would record positive thoughts about you some book publishers of educational books today are diminishing the history of the mexican history american indian history arab history and of course the history of women seems to be disappearing into a black hole while black and brown people are being redacted and told that their story and history and suffering and injustices are irrelevant. Get over it, they say. It is what it is. But other histories of suffering and genocide is required as reading in many schools. Is it about the money and influence? Go figure. Lilla. Again, talking about shading history and denying my existence as the first wife of Adam, what about the myth of that guy named Christopher Columbus? 
who supposedly discovered America. The question is, why teach these falsehoods to school children? And why do they not teach that historians state that Columbus was responsible for thousands and thousands of crimes of murder and abuse of the natives and the settlers? That he brought diseases that wiped out the natives and men that raped women as common practice? Political education will never tell this story. Today, Christopher could probably kill someone on Fifth Avenue and get away with it. The cruelty of Columbus can be found in the history of the Indies by Bartholomew de la Casas in a letter to Doria Juana de la Torre, researched by John Boy Thatcher, volume two in 1903. You can't make this stuff up, Pandora. Well, he didn't get off scot-free. Columbus was recalled to Spain in 1500, arrested, placed in chains, and put in prison for his brutality. But lucky for him, he received an official pardon by King Ferdinand. Good to have friends in high office when you're convicted of wrongdoings and have your statues in place all over the country. Lilith. They never taught that ending in history class, and he wouldn't have gotten a pardon if he was in the Southern Courts of New York. Eve. Long live the Southern District Courts of New York. Stand by. Eve. And what about another fake misogynistic hero we heard about? Apollo, supposedly handsome and brave and everything. Apollo is quoted as saying that the woman is not the parent of the child, but the parent is he who mounts. He who mounts, Lilith. I wouldn't allow Adam to mount me. Is that where they got that story from? Eve. Thank you, media, for some of you trying to do your job in the face of threatening crowds that are egged on by hateful rhetoric that no longer represents common sense and decency and have endangered your life like in some third world countries. Whoever would have thought that the free press in America would be declared the enemy of the people? Well, I believe 30% of the masses have become worshipers at the feet of mammon when the New Testament is thought to be a curse on those that sought money material or connection to anyone that promises or are worshipers of people with money. Do they really believe that one can serve God and mammon at the same time? Pandora. That's what they said. Eve. This calls for a new cap slogan. M-M-A-G-A. -A. Media makes America great again. Did you notice that fake news and opinions only TV personalities did not believe one woman out of the many that claimed abuse, sexual harassment, or even rape from famous people? Not one woman was believed. How did they face their wives and daughters? And there was a leader that was busy heaping good man praises on men that were accused and found guilty of domestic violence by their wives, while some were not even swayed by the women's battered faces and police reports sad. That said, many claim that all women accusing powerful men or high-ranking politicians were lying. All of them, together, jointly, hundreds of them all got together and lied. Think political news. Let's move on here as we watch politicians run from reporters through the hallways of power without answering questions, not believing or choosing to investigate the many allegations of politicians or men of power who were under abuse charges by this army of women. Sad, Lilith. Eve, I see you on my Skype app. Look at you, girl. Born naked with only a fig leaf to cover your delicate, life-giving rose petal. Wonders never cease. When Adam, my Adam, as I almost had him first, started running off at the mouth about being superior to women, I was out of there in a New York minute. After hearing that ignorance that women was an afterthought by God, after creating the animals and man, what did God do? Just snap two holy fingers together and say, oh Adam, by the way, I forgot something. When Adam was giving you even the garden, he was at first grateful to God for creating you from him. But then he met the behind the scenes manipulators that captured his ear and Adam realized that his major need was to be praised. And for this adulation, he was like putty in their hands. He would do anything to be accepted into the good old boys club. And you, 
Eve, you young, naive, and silly girl, set all women back bigly as you went along with that man-made mess about men being the boss. And you stand here today, just like you came from the garden, with your arms folded over your AAAA size breast and your hand over your rose petal. What happened to your fig leaf? Eve, God said I had to leave everything behind that I didn't come with. The apple leaf was brought back to life and put back on a tree. What a cheapskate. God must be a man. Okay, so thank you, Warren, for three mm -hmm. years and for sharing your your work with us today. Can we can we do I got it now. Okay. This is good. So do we have some questions for Warren about his research, about his ideas, about anything you heard? Any questions? So Warren, how did you happen to get started? Well, I lived in quite a few cities. I lived in New York, Birmingham, Alabama. I lived in Atlanta, I lived in New Orleans. I lived in the Caribbean for 20 years. And I just witnessed a lot of abuse of women. And I just started with a few notes, you know, and uh, this is 1977. I now have file cabinets, four or five file cabinets with things that I found that I would not be able to include. It would take a movie or an encyclopedia. And there's much more research out there. If we don't understand the abuse and why it started and how it's being continued today, the chances of making anything else better, racial relations, uh, country relations, it's gonna be difficult because women are still being abused in every country. I did not find a country that does not abuse women under religious edicts. Africa, China, you name the country. Uh, I did not find a religion that supported that women were equal. So I'm just the tip of the barrel Tip of, the, what, no, tip of the iceberg, right. tip of the iceberg. And I'm sure that anyone that really wants to understand uh, would be able to find much more than I found. 